Ah, oh, Justin Miller, Optimal Quad Fitness here. That is one bright light right in my face, but it's necessary to try to demonstrate a nice correlation between simple harmonic motion and uniform circular motion. So uniform circular motion, as we know, is something that rotates in a circle with a constant angular velocity. So what I've got here is a nice wheel, and I've got this little uh, clamp here attached to the stick here. And what I really want to focus our attention on is the stick, because something that is in uniform circular motion is projection onto an axis is, well, that of simple harmonic motion as well. So I doubt I'll match the oscillation of this, but look at, look at the shadow of this. The shadow is the projection of the stick right here, and I'll spin it. And this spins with a very near constant angular velocity. And what does it do on the shadow? It goes up and down, right? Well, that up and down motion is the same thing as we get with the simple harmonic oscillator. We get that it's very periodic, and it obeys the same formulization in terms of the position on the projection or of the projection on the screen as a function of time in terms of the up and down. Or we can just use a sinusoidal function in order to describe it. So we'll look a little bit at that and uh, yeah, that'll be that. So just give me a second to turn this bright light off. All right, so what do we do? We go back to uniform circular motion and what we look at is Connection between uniform circular motion and simple harmonic motion. So first we're going to consider an object that is exhibiting uniform circular motion it circles around some axis of rotation at some radial distance r and just does that. Consider an object in uniform circular motion. about some fixed axis. At a radial distance, R. So we take our fixed axis here. We can take something that's going to be rotating around a circle. I'll do my best to draw a circle right now. The dot one out. Not too horrible, not too great either, but there we go. We've got the radius of this is this. There's the fixed axis of rotation. This is the object that is then rotated around with a constant angular velocity, which really gives us uniform circular motion, right? We need a constant angular velocity. And what do we do? Well, we could start to say, what is the position of this object with respect to time? And in fact, we've done this before when we're investigating centripetal force back in the first semester of the course in mechanics. But if we want to say what the position of this is, well, we could go ahead and say we've got some coordinate system or some axes. Conveniently, I'm just going to stick it through there. There's x and there's y. And we can say that this mass occupies some coordinate, some ordered pair at any given moment in time. So we want x and y position of the mass, or of the object, we should say. So we could really start it anywhere, and it's easiest just to start it right here. So what do we do? We start it right there, and we say, okay, well, right there, it's at the position R0 in terms of an ordered pair XY. When it's up here, it'll be at the position 0R, and over here, it'll be at the position negative R0, and then 
0, negative r. And as it goes around, it occupies different ordered pairs in between those um, points themselves. Ultimately, we know that the x-coordinate itself could be written as r times the cosine of a theta. And the y-coordinate can be written as r times the sine of theta if it is at theta equals 0 degrees at t equals 0. So we put in theta equals 0 here, we get x is equal to r and y is equal to 0. And then as time goes on, well, we've got different things going on. So then the question becomes, well, what is theta? You say t equals 0, I don't see any t in there, but we know that for a angular velocity of 0, where we get constant angular, excuse me, an angular acceleration of 0, where we get constant angular velocity, we have that omega itself is correlated back to theta. So theta is equal to omega t. There we go. Why is theta omega t? Because again, we have the delta theta is equal to, for constant angular acceleration, 1 half alpha t squared plus omega i times t. But with alpha being equal to 0, because this is a constant angular velocity, we're just left with this. So this is the angular displacement. As a function of time, we're starting at theta equals 0. So the angular displacement is just the angle it makes with respect to the positive x-axis. And like this. Some other time it occupies this. And we've got some theta there. So uh, great. What do we got then? Well, we can write the ordered pair. x is equal to r times the cosine of omega t, and y is equal to r times the sine of omega t. And that's great. What happens if we start looking at the projection of this object onto either the x-axis or the y-axis? What happens then? Well, let's look at its projection onto the x-axis, shall we? The object's projection onto the x-axis gives its x position through time. So at t equals 0, it's right here. At some other t, it's right here. When it's over here, it's right there. When it's here, it's there. When it's here, there. When it's here, there. And then what does it do? It keeps on going. When it's here, it's there. When it's here, it's there. When it's here, it's there. Until it's back here. So what does this give us? I know that there's a lot of dashed lines here going on, but in terms of being, looking at its projection on the x-axis, it starts here, and then as it circles around, its projection goes this way, until it's all the way over here, then its projection goes back this way, until it's back here. And it goes this way, and it goes this way, and it goes this way, and 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 this way. In what form? that form right there. X is equal to R times the cosine of theta. Well, that is equivalent. X is equal to R times the cosine of, excuse me, not a theta, but omega t is equivalent to X is equal to A times the cosine of omega t. A is just the amplitude of the oscillation for a simple harmonic oscillator where R is the maximum displacement that it has in the X direction when we're just looking at the projection onto the X axis. They're of exactly the same form. Ultimately, the projection exhibits simple harmonic motion. Same form, same thing going on. So this is what we get in terms of the connection between uniform circular motion and simple harmonic motion itself. That Got it. So what do we have? All said, uniform circular motion 
is what we can say produces sine and cosine waves and gives us simple harmonic motion as well. All kind of interconnected. Pretty cool to think about. Or the oscillator doing the same thing. All right, so that's kind of it. Just a little short tidbit there of the connection. And this will translate into some other things when we start looking at wave phenomena, which is coming up next. But this is good for now. All right? Be well. Thank you much.